so let us begin today we shall be dealing with the tectonic framework of india before that let me give you an a brief introduction on the precambrian time scale whenever we want to deal with the precambrian time scale we have to understand this that this word precambrian okay it gives the information about the time period which is prior to the phanerozoic so i am sure you all are aware that the geological time scale can be divided into two eons the azoic eon and the phanerozoic eon azoic means no life of course now it is it has been proven that this notion is incorrect that there was no life during precambrian but yes broadly this is no life or extremely primitive life and phanerozoic means it is the new life so this uh, azoic eon is further divided into archean and proterozoic archean and proterozoic so the archean and uh, proterozoic have been raised to the status of eons as well so now if we say archean and proterozoic eons and the phanerozoic eons it would mean the same thing now the archean eon it spans from around 4 giga annum or 4 billion years to 2.5 giga annum or 2.5 billion years we all know that the origin of the earth was 4 and a half billion years ago but the time period from around 4.5 to 4 billion years is called as the hidden time means uh the rock record does not exist for that so the archean eon it is from 4 to 2.5 billion years while the proterozoic eon proterozoic eon it exists from 2.5 to 0.54 giga annum or billion years so you can see that over the last 4 billion year history of the earth i am telling 4 uh, billion years because the records from 5 to 4 billion years they do not exist and therefore that is you know this word hidden has come from the greek mythological word hades h a d e s hades it's a greek word इसका मतलब है इट मींस अंडर वर्ल्ड सो दिस वर्ड हैज बीन गिवन एज हेडन व्हिच मींस दैट द रॉक रिकॉर्ड फॉर दिस इज ऑलमोस्ट नॉट अवेलेबल और नेग्लिजिबल नाउ द आर्क सो यू कैन सी हियर दैट फ्रॉम फोर बिलियन इयर्स टू प्रेजेंट अराउंड 88% 88% of the earth's history it is captured in these two eons archean and proterozoic and therefore it makes this time period very very important so if you consider 
the geological time as 24 hours so you will find that the phanerozoic eon it is a very small part of this 24 hours because the around 90 percent of this time has been spanning the archean and proterozoic and this period is important this time period is important because it was during this time the earth's crust earth's crust was being formed of course you will see how they have formed over this time period all right let me add few more slides here okay so you have to keep in mind that the Precambrian time scale is or the Precambrian time period it spans from 4 to 2.5 billion years and after 0.5 billion years it starts the Cambrian. So we say that the Precambrian Cambrian boundary okay Precambrian Cambrian boundary where does it fall? It falls at 0 0.542 billion years or 542 million years. So in some text, uh, this figure may be updated. So when you have to look for the exact time uh, notation, go for the most recent geological time scale published by the ICS. So but yes, we can say that the Precambrian Cambrian boundary it is uh, it is marked at 0.5 uh, billion years or 550 million years that is how it is denoted okay so the archean eon archean eon it spans around 1500 million years or 1 1.5 billion years and it has been divided into four era So whatever I am teaching you right now, it constitutes an important part of your GSI preparation as well. A lot of questions are asked. So if we go from the oldest to youngest, the oldest era of the Archean Eon is called as Eo Archean. It spans from 4 to 3.6 billion years so remember when i say 4 to 3.6 billion billion years it also means 4000 to 3600 million years then comes paleoarchean paleoarchean it spans 3.6 to around 3.2 billion years then comes Mesoarchean. Sorry. Then comes Mesoarchean. Mesoarchean spans from three point two to around. 2.8 billion years and then comes the Neoarchean. Neoarchean, it spans from 2.8 to 2.5 billion years. So, these time periods, they are characterized by the formation of several proto-continents. So, if if you look at the earth's history, whatever we see today, the earth was not in that form always. Okay. The earth was, you know, earth has evolved over time. And this evolution of the earth has taken place over the last 4 billion years history. In subsequent classes, we shall be uh, seeing how the uh, earth has evolved, how oceans have formed and how these uh, configurations have come across each other. Okay. So the Archean Aeon, it is characterized by the formation of Sialic protocontinents. 
so first an important point over here is formation of sialic proto continent so i am sure you must have read up, read about cial and sima in your lower classes now the archean is also marked by an important uh, part of the crust that is called as cratons okay these are normally low grade granite greenstone terrains okay so the cratons they are stable masses so first of all whenever you are defining the uh, cratons you have to say that the cratons are stable land masses now stability means what means that there has been no tectonic movement when i say no tectonic movement it also now requires for how long because there could be a no tectonic movement one hour ago a day ago an year ago so how long there should be no tectonic movement to call a landmass as craton and normally this has been given as 1 billion year so if a landmass has not moved for last 1 billion year it can be referred to as craton so stable landmass and they generally have the uh, compositions of low grade granite terrains so all the major continents they have these uh, cratons for example they are in africa australia canada south america europe india okay so the archean eon is important in terms of the formation of these stable land masses over which then further course of evolution of the earth took place okay so uh, how do we define archean eon archean eon is the oldest part of the geological history which spans from 4 billion years to 2.5 billion years it is marked by the formation of sialic proto continents and cratons so how are cratons defined these are stable land masses which show no noticeable tectonic movements for at least last 1 billion year and they are formed of low grade granitic greenstone terrains <laughs> next comes the proterozoic eon the proterozoic eons it spans around 1950 million years okay and then like archean eon the proterozoic eon has also been divided into three so let us divide them uh, into three eras the oldest one is paleo proterozoic which is spans from 2.5 to 1.6 billion years followed by the mesoproterozoic mesoproterozoic it spans from 1.6 to 1 billion year and then the neoproterozoic the new proterozoic spans from 1 to 0.54 billion years or 1 billion year to 542 million years i'm not going to harass you with the uh, other periods in the uh, in these three eras but an important thing i would like to tell you the top of neo proterozoic era it is marked by the ediacara period is very very important and this ediacaran it spans from 630 to 542 
million years. So what does it mean? That the pre-Cambrian Cambrian boundary may also be referred to as Ediacaran Cambrian boundary. Okay. And Ediacaran is important because it is this time period during which the origin of life Tenses of the life forms evolving and therefore you must have heard of uh, several times idiakara fauna small shelly fauna so these are very important very recently in india dickinsonia is a genus which is also an idiakara fauna it is discovered in bhimbetka this is a an archaeological site in bhopal madhya pradesh only and it's a very very rare fossil which is an idiakara fossil so if this question is asked uh what which time which period marks the top of neo protozoic era then edia karan is the answer okay now the protozoic eon it is marked by great crustal stabilization okay so an important feature of the protozoic eon is the crustal stabilization and this crustal stabilization is marked by the formation of continental rifts, continental rifts, intracratonic basins, intracratonic basins, then several continental flood basalts. And very importantly, in various places around the world, lead and zinc mineralization was also there. A basic difference between the uh, Archean and Proterozoic features or landmasses is that Archean is marked by the Cretons, while the Proterozoic it is marked by these features continental rifts intracratonic basins flood basalt which means that this was a tectonically active period and therefore we find the mobile belts we will discuss all these terms mobile belts so archean is marked by cretons protozoic has these mobile belts and as the name suggests the mobile belts they are tectonically active okay and together together the cretons and mobile belts mobile belts when found together on a large landmass that landmass is called as shield so for example we have the indian shield okay <clears throat> so i am sure you are getting this terminology so cretons they are tectonically stable mobile belts they have been tectonically active and once they are together they are called as they make up the shield. So how is a shield defined? So shield is a large area of the earth's crust consisting mostly of the pre-Cambrian rocks. So the definition of a shield so it consists of pre-Cambrian rocks And they have the nucleus of cratons and mobile belts. So I hope it is clear to everyone that how the shields may be defined. All right.
Shields can also be called as mosaic of cratons and mobile belts. Okay. The next word which we have been discussing is craton. So a craton is a part of continent, continental crust which has been stable for at least 1 billion year. These are stable part of crust, continental crust. Okay. They are typically formed of lower to middle Precambrian igneous and metamorphic rocks. So they have this composition of igneous and metamorphic rocks. So we can say that the cratons, they are made up of crystalline rocks. And what is the age of these crystalline rocks? Typically lower to middle Precambrian. The cratons, they are normally composed of granite greenstone terrains, as I had already mentioned. So this composition, it represents shallower crustal levels. So the rock composition of the Cratons is granite, greenstone, terrains. So if a question is asked, the granite greenstone terrain composition of the craton indicates. So if, the, if in the option it is given shallower crustal levels, then that will be the correct answer. Shallower crustal levels. All right. They generally are Archean in age. So you have to remember this. Archean age. They generally are of Archean age. The third one is the mobile belt that we have just discussed. Mobile belt. And how is a mobile belt defined? It is a long narrow belt within a, the continental crust where tectonic activity occurs. So basically this is a narrow belt which envelops the cratons and it shows noticeable evidences of uh, tectonic activity. In fact, in India, the central Indian tectonic zone is a type of mobile belt which is still active. And how are these represented? The, activity, te te uh, the tectonic activity is represented by the earthquakes, which are very frequent in that zone. Okay. So this is a tectonically active zone. It refers to transcratonic orogenic belts. Okay. Transcratonic orogenic belts. The mobile belts, they are curvilinear. They are not stable like cratons. The mobile belts are curvilinear and since they are tectonically active, they are composed of high grade metamorphic rocks. I am sure you understand why this is because the tectonic activities, they cause the metamorphism of the uh, rocks of which they are formed and they are high grade metamorphic rocks. So the common rocks which are found in this type of uh, features, they are granite, granulite belts, granite, granulite belts and they surround or they envelop the cratons. Okay. So I hope you understood the difference that cratons, they are normally granitic and greenstone terrains, which are low grade, while mobile belts, they are granite, granulite belts, because mobile belts are tectonically active. Therefore, they are high grade metamorphic rocks. Now the mobile belts, they are separated from the cratons by ductile shear zones. 
and they are mostly protozoic in age. Protozoic in age. Okay. Normally, the mobile belts they are characterized by the lithological association of quartzite, carbonate, pellite, QCP suit. Okay, so sometimes this question is also asked which of the following uh, lithological suit represents the mobile belt? So it will be QCP or quartzite. Carbonate and pellite suit. It may or may not show the uh, evidences of volcanics volcanics in it. Okay, all right. So if we look at this map, we can see here the important shields of the earth. So these orange color. Uh, features are representing the shields. So these shields, they are, as I had told you, that these are all parts of the continental crust. So the Canadian shield, the Guana shield, the Brazilian shield, Platian shield, Baltic shield, Angaran shield, China Korean shield, Indian shield, Australian shield, African shield. So if you look at this, uh, map and the legend over here, you can see here that these shields, they are the, they are scattered all along the globe and they form an important part of the uh, earth. Antarctic shield is also a very important shield. And as I had previously defined, a shield is a mosaic of craton and mobile belts. But we'll be focusing mainly to the Indian shield. So when we talk of the Indian shield, then this is the map of the Indian shield. Okay. We'll come to this map in a bit. First, let me draw and then I'll explain this map to you. So the Indian shield, it consists of five major cratons. Before that, we can divide this Indian shield into uh, two blocks, the northern block and the southern block. Okay, so that will help you to remember uh, the location of those uh, uh, cratons in the Indian shield. So this portion This portion is the northern block, geologically speaking, while this portion, it is the southern block. In the northern block, we have two prominent cratons. They are the Bundelkhand Craton, which is located over here, the Bundelkhand region. Bundelkhand Craton. And we have the Aravli Craton, which is here. Okay. Aravli Craton. And in the southern block, we have three important cratons, which are the Singhun craton, the Bastar craton, which are adjacent to each other, and we have a very important one which you all must be knowing the Dharwar Kraton. We shall discuss all these Kratons in details in the later classes. So these five major Kratons, which are Archean in age, they can be easily divided into 
uh, two blocks, the northern block and the southern block. Northern block consists of Aravli craton and Bundelkhand craton, while the southern block consists of three cratons, the Singhum craton, the Bastar craton, and Dharwar craton. The Bastar craton is also sometimes referred to as the Bhandara craton. Another name for it, Bhandara craton. Few people, they also uh, call the Meghalaya craton as one of the craton, but it is debatable. Meghalaya, Meghalaya Craton. Few people consider Meghalaya Craton as Craton, while others they disagree and they say that this is a mobile belt. Now, let me add this map again. Uh, I need, I'll need this map again. Just hold on. Yeah. Okay. So we just saw the five important Cratons of India, and now what about the uh, Proterozoic mobile belts. So we have three prominent Proterozoic mobile belts. Three mobile belts. And what, as I had previously mentioned, that these mobile belts they envelop the uh, cratons. So let us first draw the position of these mobile belts, and then I'll fit the. Uh, Cratons into it, and then you will easily remember those. Okay, so the important uh, mobile belts they are the Satpura mobile belt, so this is the Satpura mobile belt, MB means mobile belt. Then we have the Eastern Ghat mobile belt, which is also sometimes referred to as EGMB, Eastern Ghat mobile belt. And the third one, it is the Pandyan mobile belt in the South India. Pandyan mobile belt. Another important mobile belt that envelops the two cratons of the northern block, it is the Aravali Delhi mobile belt. Okay, so this is the Aravali Delhi mobile belt. All right, so we saw these three or four, let us make it four. Four mobile belts, which are Proterozoic in age. Now let us try to fit the cratons that we saw in the previous slide. So here we had the Aravli craton. Here was the location of the Bundelkhand craton. Here there was the Singhum craton. Here there was the Bastar craton, and then here it was the Dharwar craton. So our theory, it uh, which we just studied, proves right that the cratons of India have been enveloped by these different mobile belts. Okay, so these important mobile belts, they are. The Aravali Delhi mobile belt, the Satpura mobile belt, the Eastern Ghat mobile belt, and Pandyan mobile belt. Sometimes this part, which of the Satpura mobile belt, which uh, envelops the Singhum craton over here, this zone, it is also referred to as Singhum mobile belt. So we have two portions in Singhum craton. The, the Singhum Craton and the Singhum Mobile Belt, which envelops it. We'll see how uh, you can easily draw them. Okay. Now, let us go back to the map. So, we see over here, this is the portion of Aravali Craton, which is uh, enveloped by the Sapula Mobile Belt. The Bundelkhan Craton is over here. Then, the Bastar Craton, Singhum Craton, and the Dharwar Kraton. The important mobile belts that I have just mentioned. Now, 
this extension of the uh, satpura mobile belt over here which we named as the uh, aravalli delhi mobile belt satpura mobile belt eastern ghat mobile belt and the pandyan mobile belt or the pa uh, this this zone over here pandyan mobile belt if you see here carefully there are several shear zones and uh, rifts which have joined these two or which have not which have basically separated the two portions okay now during the protozoic times there is also mention of some sedimentary basins and these sedimentary basins which were formed during this uh, time period they are sometimes also referred to as purana basins so let me just draw for you the purana basins and their locations and what what are their names okay so during the protozoic time period we have two features we have the protozoic mobile belts and we have the protozoic purana basins so let me draw first the mobile belts okay so these mobile belts as you all remember this is the aravalli delhi mobile belt satpura mobile belt eastern ghat mobile belt and the pandyan mobile belt okay now let me draw the purana basins in it the important purana basins they were this is the sedimentary basin which is very commonly referred to as the vindhyan basin vindhyan basin then this basin over here this is the chatisgarh basin chatisgarh basin an important basin over here which you all know and you can tell by the shape the kadappa basin kadappa basin and we have the bhima kaladi basin over here these are the four important purana basins sorry this is the bhima kaladgi so in the protozoic time period there is the presence of these important four important mobile belts and four important purana basins so what is the difference between these purana basin rocks and the mobile belts so if we are to uh, uh, make the differences then the purana rocks so let me make a difference over here purana basin rocks and the mobile belts so the purana rocks they are platform sequences platform sequences while the mobile belts they are sheared and fold belts sheared and fold belts the purana rocks they are normally undeformed while the mobile belt rocks they are highly deformed
the purana rocks they are sedimentary rocks they are unmetamorphosed while the mobile belt rocks they are high grade metamorphic rocks so highly metamorphosed metamorphose up to granulite facies okay so if you see this map associated with the aravalli delhi mobile belt we have the vindhyan basin associated with the eastern ghat mobile belt there is the kadappa basin associated with the uh, satpura mobile belt or the singhum shear zone or singhum mobile belt is the chatisgarh basin so this is how you can easily remember those so now if we are to add to this again the uh, cratons so how we are going to add to it the cratons let us just do a quick revision that here there is the aravalli craton here it is the bundelkhand craton here singhum craton here bastar craton and here we have the dharwar craton so if we look at this precambrian uh, setup of the indian shield we get three types of features the archean cratons and the proterozoic mobile belts and proterozoic purana basins so now let us have a look at this map over here in this you can find the existence of the cratons the mobile belts as well as the uh, sedimentary basins the purana basins so for today's class this setup of the precambrian uh, portion of the indian shield uh, i think this will be enough and uh, you should read about it from the various books that are available and then if there are any questions you can always uh, ask me